Hello and welcome to the Art of Immersion, where we break down the hidden techniques in your favorite media that makes things really cool and also it makes things kind of suck. So in my last two videos, I broke down Star Wars and The Hobbit and showed you some cool motion graphics and VFX stuff that maybe you didn't know about. But today, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to teach you how to make a really cool effect called the slit scan effect. And this technique's been used in feature films and music videos, and you've probably seen it already before. But I'm a motion designer and a director, and I was the lead animator on one of the most recent uses of it, which is Muramasa's music video, I Don't Think I Could Do It Again. So first I have to give a huge shout out to motion designer George Dyson. Now George is the designer who taught me how to make this effect when I was working on that project, and we worked on it together, along with another talented designer, Ollie Duke. I'll leave links in the description below for both of those designers. Check out their work, they're amazing. I'm gonna teach you some of the stuff that we used on that project to make the effect work. There's some hidden gotchas with the effect, and if you've tried to use it before, you might have noticed it can be kind of glitchy. So I'm gonna show you how to get past those glitches, and hopefully you can make something even cooler than what we made. All right, let's jump in. What I can recommend when you're shooting your footage, first of all, is uh, A, shoot high frame rate very important. Uh, the higher the frame rate, the better the image will look and it will remove a lot of the steppiness that comes with the effect. What you're shooting kind of makes a difference. So I would recommend you either shoot a wide shot with only one subject moving um, and when you apply the effect, that subject will have the effect applied to it and everything else will be kind of stationary and still. It'll make it look really cool. The second tip I'd give you in terms of what you're shooting, if you move the camera, uh, as in like panning or trucking from left to right or right to left, that also looks really cool. And of course, experiment. Like for example, this shot with the skateboard, that came from me just playing around with the footage. I was just looking through all the stuff they shot and uh, I just found this little moment that I thought was cool and um, it ended up working. Um, but those are my tips for shooting. Let's get into the actual digital effect itself. Okay. So let's jump in. So first and foremost, what's really important to do when you're creating this effect is making sure that you're in a 16 bits per channel color space. So if you just click there, you'll notice I, I have 16. Uh, by default, After Effects is gonna set you to eight, uh, but you really need 16 or 32 even to uh, make this effect work. And I'll, I'll show you why in a second. But if you just open up a composition and you have your footage, as I do here, here I have this woman who is dancing. So let's just play this to give you a sense of what this looks like. So what you need to do is make a new gradient. So let's just go up here and make a gradient. Okay. Name that, and let's just do a gradient ramp. Okay, so this is a standard gradient, and what you can do if you want to, because we're going to be applying some effects to this down the line, is just make a new composition out of this. So, move all attributes and set. Let's just rename this gradient ramp PC for pre comp. And there we go, now we can just turn it off. Great. So, the effect that's gonna drive this is called time displacement. As you can see, I already have it up and ready to go. Um, but just in case, let's just start from zero. And type in the time displacement effect, put that on. And it's gonna act a bit weird and that's okay. Now that's not exactly what we're looking for. So what we want to do is just make sure this is set to gradient ramp. So first off, let's figure out exactly what's happening here. So as you can see at the bottom of the frame, she's glitching and kind of warping out, whereas at the top of the frame, she looks relatively normal. What this is doing is if I go into this pre-comp, everything that is white on this screen is moving forward in time and everything that is darker is the same time and is going backwards in time even. 
this is basically frozen in place and this is moving ahead by one second which you can see max displacement time so as we scrub forward eventually the top of this comp is going to catch up with the bottom and you're going to get a nice little twirl effect because the actress is uh, twirling in place um, but right this second as you'll notice it doesn't look so great it looks very steppy so like I said before you need to make sure your color space is 16 bits per channel at least and that's because if you look in here there's quite a lot of banding on this gradient and that is what's causing the stepping effect uh, if the frames per second on the clip was even uh, sh even smaller than 60 then this effect would be would look even worse right now um, but there's a couple things you can do to make this look better first and foremost if you go up to the gradient ramp and play around with ramp scatter it will look much better there is a fine line if you go for example too much this is going to spread it out and as you can see if you zoom in uh, it's what it's doing is it's basically just adding some noise and right now here that looks okay it looks better than it did before but if we go back to our comp once that renders oh by the way this is a render beast you'll you'll notice it's it's uh put that grain and that noise into our footage which I mean, if that's the effect that you like, then by sure, by all means. But um, I want something a bit smoother than that, so that's not going to work. So what I find is uh, a good number to have is about 15 for this ramp scatter. Uh, save our work, because I like to save a million times. As you can see, it, it does introduce a little bit of noise there, but for the most part, especially when you're playing it, it's not too bad. So, to make this look even better, the other number that we can play around with is time resolution, frames per second up here. Now, I should warn you, the more you play around with the time displacement effect, the longer it's gonna take for your computer to render. I have by no means the best computer out there, but it's okay, it's a pretty decent computer, and once I start playing with these numbers, it slows down quite a lot. I'm going to cut out the render times just for the sake of demonstration, so uh, if you see this edit around a bit, that's probably why, but just so you know, it's going to take a while. For example, if we bump this number up to about 240, that's already looking much smoother than what we had before. It's reducing the amount of steps in that banding. And if we go up to even 360, it's as you can see. As you can see, it's it's uh, there's a little bit of a diminishing returns situation happening here. But if we go to around 420, um, it's when it's playing, it's going to look much smoother than what it did before. So that's um, one tip. Another tip you can do if you really want to make it much smoother than this is to add a pixel motion blur effect which I believe comes default in After Effects and as you can see that's just reset our, uh, our, our scene which is not what we wanted um, right so what I think we have to do is actually pre-comp this footage so let's just make this um, Original one gradient pre comp. Now let's apply the effect. It's going to take a while. And it doesn't look like it did too much, but it is uh, smoothing it out a bit. And if I play with this number of shutter samples, it should become more obvious. Maybe not. Yeah, let's go in, zoom in, do a little before, after. So that's what it looks like with the effect, and that's without it. So it's just helping to kind of smooth that effect a bit and make it a little less jarring. Again, maybe for you, this is perfectly fine. Um, 
And I should say, obviously, the more effects you add to this scene, it's going to make it e render even slower. So maybe you've decided for your client or for yourself that um, you don't need to have it be too smooth. Um, but in general, this is what uh, is going to make it look smoother. That and playing around with the frames per second on the time displacement effect. So I'm going to render this out just to show you what this looks like now. Um, I'm probably going to get a cup of tea because it's going to take a while. Okay, and we're back. I've had a cup of tea. That took way too long. I've even shortened the duration because I just couldn't handle it anymore. But here's what this looks like now. So with the frames per second up, the shutter sample with the pixel motion blur up, and a little bit of noise from the ramp scatter, it's looking much smoother than what it did before. Again, if you really wanted to go down and, and make this like really, really smooth and, and crisp, like in the Flume video or in the Muramasa video, then you need to shoot um, a higher frame rate. This is at 60, which is already better than 24 for sure. But um, if you shoot even higher, then it's gonna look even better. Um, the higher the, the frame rate, the, the smoother the footage is gonna look. Now, if you have a really beefy computer or just a lot of time for an export, you can play around with these numbers. You can play around with the frames per second or the pixel motion blur, and um, you can make this effect look even smoother. Um, but in general, to make your life easier, if you can, shoot with a higher frame rate. It's just gonna work out much better for you. Now, let's go into a different example. Um, let's say that you wanted something that looks a little bit closer to the Muramasa video. Like, for example, this spot here. Where is that? Let me find that. Here. So this is a very different uh, direction. Obviously, we're going left to right. Just like I was saying before, the, um, the panning works really cool. So let's go into a new comp. And um, if I just open this up, this is another goofy stock footage. This is another goofy stock video. Uh, but let me just show you what this is. Right. Yeah, don't ask me where I find these things. So this guy is going uh, from left to right of the screen and while well, he's actually in center, but the, the, we're panning with him, which is gonna make some really cool left to right movement for the, the effect. Um, but uh, unfortunately, this particular footage is 24 frames per second. So it's gonna have some of that banding and uh, it's gonna take a lot of processing power to kind of remove it. So. I'm gonna spare you some of that. I'm not gonna do um, all the all the tips and tricks I would that I talked about before to make this look better when I apply the effect. But just know that you can um, do some of that, and it, it like I said, it will increase your processing time, but it it will make it smoother. Okay, so let's get in here. So as you can see, I already have a gradient set up. Um, let me just show you what this is. So as you can see, I just have another gradient in here. Uh, and this time, this gradient is um, obviously instead of being vertical like this one, this is horizontal. Um, and just like before, it's going to work the same. So everything that is darker in value is going to be um, uh, less, it's going to be backwards in time until it gets to like a midpoint, which is about the same time. And then everything that is lighter in value is gonna be forwards in time. So what that means when we get to this composition, I'm gonna close out of this, is that if I come in here and get my time displacement effects, and then set that to the gradient, so now if I give this a playback, you can just see what hap what's happening when I have this effect on. Cool. 
Cool. So it's just stretching out the image. To, uh, to make it even cooler, it would be great if when he, if he basically just stops here and then we stretch him all the way out. So if he were to stop where he is here and then everything, all the movement after him would continue to stretch almost like we're like an accordion effect. That would be pretty cool. And that's basically what's happening in that Muramasa video. So how do we get that to work? Um, well, that involves manipulating the gradient and also manipulating this value here, which is the amount of time that we're displacing. So just like I said before, everything that's darker in value is gonna be slowed down in time. Well, if we animate on this value as the clip is playing, we can actually play around with freezing him in, in place as the clip goes on. So he will continue to move forward, but everything behind him will move slower until it's eventually stuck. Uh, in this frame. It's a bit hard to explain because uh, it's, you know, wonky uh, time stuff, but we will show you. First off, just like I was saying, since everything is dark is, is um, backwards in time, what I want to do is I actually want to move the gradient. And I want to move the gradient to start around here. So I'm going to come in here with the gradient effect. And as you can see, I already have some keyframes on here, but I'm going to get rid of those. So I'm just going to move the start of the ramp to be about where he is. Yeah, maybe it could go a little bit further. Maybe there. So I kind of want to line up the line to be where he is in the frame. It's basically there. It's not 100%, but... That's okay for now. Um, and I'm not gonna animate it yet. What I wanna do is just show you what happens when I animate this factor here. So right now, if I put a keyframe, that's at one second. Now if I scrub forward in time, you can already see what's happening. Maybe if I set this to two, it'll make it a bit more obvious. No, that didn't work. Let me move this. Maybe I got a bit too um, greedy with where it should be in space. So, set my keyframe, scrub forward, bring this up to two seconds. It's working. It's getting there. Start with two seconds. Now, here we go. It's starting to happen here. I have this set at three. Now, what I found works the best is to just bring this number up as the clip plays along. Um, but to not go too high in the increments, so increments just um, a bit at a time. So instead of just keeping it at Three, I'm going to bring it up to 3.5. Bring it up to four. And hopefully you can kind of see what's happening here. So basically, as uh, what I want to try to do is set a keyframe to when he starts to move, when, when he becomes um, unstuck in time. It's weird kind of time language we're talking here um, but right I like him when he's frozen in place here and I want to try to keep him frozen there for as long as I can so here he starts to move so what I want to do is just increase this number to 4.5 as you can see it it's it's not affecting this part here so yeah now it's just a matter of just trying to prolong him being in that position for as long as we can. So I'm gonna bring this up to five. Five point five. Six. 
7. And maybe I'll finally let the poor guy move. Let's just see what that looks like. Cool. Now, another thing we can do is to actually animate the gradient. So, let's say starting around here, once the effect really starts to kick in, we want to animate something. That's what makes this effect really cool, is you can you have so much room to play with. Like for example, these two uh, gradients are linear gradients, but you can also play with radial gradients. You can play with masks within the gradients themselves. Once you understand how the effect works, there's just really endless uh, variety to to uh, kind of add to this. So I'm excited to see uh, what anybody creates from this. But let me just show you one cool thing, and this is very simple, but it just kind of adds something to it. And that's just to pull the gradient out. So what that's doing is just really just pulling it out from there. So let me show you what that looks like here. And in order to make this work, we'll have to kind of play around with our time values because if we're stretching it out, then that means that this is becoming darker in value as per the gradient, and therefore we're going backwards in time. So we need to have less time to play with. And we can also play around with the time itself to speed it up and, and um, kind of speed ramp it. So here, for example, it's at 5.5, if I bring that down to 4, and then up to 7, it's going to go back and forth. I think that's too much, let's bring it down to 6. And let's see what that looks like. Cool, it's starting to do something cool, especially towards the end. I'm liking that. I think if I were to extend this, I'd probably go into some interesting territory here. But all of this is just from animating the gradient map. And obviously, if I were to animate that more or go in the opposite direction, it'd probably give me some really cool stuff too. So there's quite a lot to play around with here. So there you have it. Now you can make the slit scan effect on your own. And I, I want to know what you're making with it. If you're making a project and you're gonna use this effect and this video is helpful, please let me know and shoot me a link to it, I wanna see it. Um, if you've already made the effect before in another video and you have questions about how I did it or you think I got it wrong and you wanna share some stuff that you've learned too that make, maybe will make it better, like also please let me know in the comments. I wanna see it. And until next time.